Welcome to the Lights, Camera, Rant Podcast. Your source for the latest on movies, TV shows, and video games. Get ready for ranting, raving, and reviewing. Here is your host, Lee. Hi everyone, welcome back for another edition of Lights, Camera, Rant. And for this particular episode, I had the privilege of jumping onto the Tickets for Two podcast. It was a great episode, it was so much fun to make, we spoke about The Dark Knight Rises, is it a good film or is it shit, and we also did a recap of Comic Con, it was a great collab, and I can't wait for you guys to hear it. So without further ado, let's get into Lights Camera Rant, appearing on Tickets for Two podcast. Let's go! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Tickets for Two podcast. And today, we have a very, very special guest on our show. You all know him Woo! as the brilliant creator and host of his podcast, Lights, Camera, Rants, where you can hear him and everything that he has to say from topics ranging from Marvel to TV shows like The Boys and even video game reviews. We are honored to have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Lee, on our show today. How are you doing, good man? Hey guys, how you going? I need to crop that and I'm going to post that as my intro into my episodes moving forward because <laughs> that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And most of all, I feel so uh, privileged. In fact, I'm your first guest. Yeah, we're really happy to have you on. Uh, enjoy listening to your podcast. I especially like it that you cover so much of the video game news because we don't cover that on our show. <laughs> so it's been a good outlet to to catch up on all that. Thank you. I it's uh I just try like I um just try to cover as much as I can um because I always thought like I was like oh what happens, what happens if I don't have enough? I'm like oh it's all right. I'll just hit everything. I can't miss. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, cover your bases. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's great. I know you and I had a run in together on your show not too long ago, but it finally feels great that all three of us are finally united. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we've been past three weeks, four weeks, we've been trying to plan this. I think it's been three weeks. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'm so glad because, like, Andrew, like, you were able to pop on an episode, I think, about four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago, you were able to pop on an episode, which was that's, a lot of fun. That's and I right. think as soon as we finished that, we're like, all right, we need to get all three of us. We need to book this in. We need to do this. <laughs> hey, you got the ugly stepsister here, ready to go. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> Not left no. out anymore. <laughs> the other half of my soul is right here in the show <laughs> with me. <laughs> Too kind. Too kind, Andrew. <laughs> All right, but Lee, I, I know I just gave everyone introduction on what you do, but let the people know from your perspective. Let what, what do you what's going on on your show? Like, what do you love the most about what you're doing? Ooh, how long do you have, man? We have all night for you, but yeah. we have all night. <laughs> oh no, nah, it's you know it's especially after the past uh, past weekend with Comic Con, it's just been so busy trying to keep up with everything, make sure nothing's missed. Um, and then even before that, you know, the boys just wrapped up as well, trying to catch up on all that, which mm-hmm. again, whoever, whoever, who if you haven't watched it, you're missing out. Um, but from that, you know, just trying to keep up with all the Marvel TV shows, all the movies, and obviously, you know, we're into the later half of the year. So all the video game, kind of like all the big video games are kind of coming out this later half, you know, especially the fact that with God of War, finally got a release date mm-hmm. for that two weeks I ago know, yeah. and i'm like and it's yeah. been there was so many rumors going around it's getting delayed it's not getting delayed and so i was really happy that's come out and you know just trying to stay up to date and actually trying to catch up with you guys you know trying to make sure to pump out as quality content that you guys do every single week oh man not you're you're flattering us because we love everything that you do, and I, it's funny that you mentioned the whole, like God of War uh, video game finally being announced because I know Santi's a huge fan of all the recent video game nou- announcements that have been coming out. Is that right, Santi? Like you love that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm all into that. You know, uh, God of War getting a release date is great. I'm waiting for Hogwarts Legacy to get a release yeah, date. I'm... That's the one I really have my eyes on, but we'll see. I know, and I thought that was going to get delayed too. I was like, come on. 
and it, it right now it just says pending COVID. November or December. Yeah, that, that usually means it's getting pushed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the delay, always a delay. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Even like the the Knights of the Old Republic, which is to me oh. one of the best Star Wars stories ever made, that got delayed indefinitely. It might be years. It might get canceled. It might be gone. I know, and they did a nice trailer for it. I was so pumped for that. I'm like, yes, yes. And then, yeah, just the other day, um, yeah, it's not coming at at all yet. Yeah. That was for, uh, was it uh, PlayStation Showcase last year? Yeah, they had it as one of their main showpieces for the PS5, essentially. Like, hey, PlayStation Studios is also going to be supporting this. It's coming. It's going to be a timed exclusive. You know, the first year, or however long, you only play it on PS5. And now it's like rumors kind of make sense why Microsoft may be passing the project. And they fired the, the director, the, the, everyone. You know, they're like, we're pausing this. We don't know what we're doing. Which yeah, is, uh, it's story of the life with EA, <laughs> really. Yeah, pretty much. Or the, or the fact that uh, you know, <laughs> pay for, for an ass end for, uh, every, you know, three quarters of the game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, I I was actually that was really gutted when I saw the fact that that got completely delayed because I was like yeah, and you completely milked it again saying, you know, that it was going to be rebuilt from the ground up. You know, they weren't doing just a HD HD touch up. They were rebuilding this in everything and now it's like, yeah, no. Nah, you're not getting it. I'm like I I feel bad because I think I'm the only one here that has not even played like a single Star Wars game since the one like on the Nintendo 64, <laughs> the pod racing. Oh god! <laughs> I think it's the what? Last time I played uh, yeah a Star Wars game. <laughs> what you didn't? Even, oh, dude. You never you played Star play Wars that. Battlefront? Oh no! See my my older brother, he has that, but I never touched it. But man, yeah, like oh, now now I feel one. left out. <laughs> it, that was that is like yeah. top tier Star Wars games. I was going to mention, since The Last of Us, the first one's getting a remake, and they have the HBO show coming out, I feel like part of the reason they wanted to remake that game was if people come watch the show, they can go back and play a more updated model. Um, what do you think about the castings they've done so far? Like, I think they brought Pedro Pascal. Um, Bella Ramsey from Game of Thrones is playing Ellie. They got the guy who directed Chernobyl and created that was the showrunner for that show behind The Last of Us. Yeah, it's on, it's on HBO. I, I'm pretty hyped for it. Yeah, I, I, I was happy it was Pedro that got announced. I was like, cool, like, that's really positive. And the fact that yeah, it's a showrunner who did uh, the was Chernobyl, isn't it? And that was I was like, okay, that's all positive signs going into this, and just hoping the fact that they don't stuff it up. Um, the thing is, as I said, I said to Andrew, we don't have HBO Max here. Oh, what? No way. No, nah, we don't have that's HBO right. Max. Um, we have something else that's called like binge that sometimes we get some of the shows, but we don't get all of them. So oh. see, this would be a good time. If we, if we had like a, a VPN sponsorship, we could plug oh, perfect. A VPN free to you so that you, so that you can <laughs> to use HBO. <laughs> yeah. It'd be perfect. Right there. Right we'll there. find you some websites to use. <laughs> Like we like we're back turning back the clocks a year. Like me and my mates were worried that we wouldn't be able to see the Snyder Cut. Oh really? Oh, that was, was that a huge thing. I totally didn't forgot about that because it wasn't HBO, right? Wasn't yeah. It? So how did you end up watching it? Well, lucky enough, it actually, which we didn't know until about the day beforehand, it was actually coming onto the other streaming service called Binge, and so we we're really happy for that because at the very start we were trying to we were trying to use a VPN and everything to get into HBO Max, but we kept. Yeah, we we couldn't do it, mm. and then it's funny enough when we finally got to watch it for the first ten minutes, we thought there was something wrong with the uh, aspect ratio. <laughs> That's true. And that was his, that, that was his vision. We got to respect that. Yes, I'm like I understand your vision, but just give us an option to see it in widescreen, mm -hmm. like every other motion motion blockbuster film. I, I mentioned that on our Q and A, uh, Lee and Andrew. When I my first like DVD I bought was the Two Towers on Lord of the Rings, and it gave a full screen and a widescreen version, and I had no idea like what the difference. I got the widescreen, and like what are these massive black bars like covering up half the screen? I can't see, I can't see shit. And then I went yeah. back and I got the full screen version. I'm like, I, I thought it looked better, but then I realized a bunch of the stuff on the sides is getting cut off because of the yeah. aspect ratio. But it's just now they don't they don't like that stuff when it comes to DVDs. It's all perfectly fit. The only thing you really notice it now is when you go see IMAX. 
Yeah. I, just, I saw my very first yes. IMAX movie ever for Thor, Love and Thunder. That was like my very, very first IMAX movie. I loved it, actually. It was pretty nice. Oh, that would have been such a, that would have been such a good film to see in IMAX. Besides everything yeah, else happened in the, the film, colors, visually, that oh, would have been God. stunning. <laughs> 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 but all right let's uh so i love that we're all ranting here i love the talk but we did come planned with a nice little schedule because we do have yeah, we did fun things that we want to get through and uh, we're excited that lee you get to hop on and join us on this so for those of you listening we have a couple things planned for all of you so we hope you stick around to the very end so we have a very fun debate planned where we're gonna have lee defend a very good movie and it's going to be and Santi is going to be on the opposite end trying to get Lee on the defensive like can he defend it the negative reviews are they is it warranted is it not warranted so we're we excited to have that and following that segment we're going to go around the table here and we're going to start talking about what movie would be better if we recasted the main actor I'm sure a lot of you are going to start thinking the same thing like hmm, I wonder what, what movie I would change and following that segment, we're going to go into which Marvel character we think deserves a good, a good spinoff. And at the end of the show, we're going to end it with talking about every single Comic-Con major announcement that we got. We have a lot planned for you today. So let's get started in talking about the incredible debate between Santi and Lee. So uh, Lee, tell us, right. what movie are you going to be defending? All right. So the movie I'm defending that I believe does not deserve all the hate it gets is The Dark Knight Rises, which wraps up beautifully the Christopher Nolan trilogy. But nearly every person I do speak to, it's always the same thing. It's like, oh, I didn't like it. It's lesser than Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And, but I'm like, no, it is, it is just as good as the rest of them. Funny um, you mentioned The Dark Knight Rises what do you think because happens? we just talked about IMAX, and this was the first movie I saw at IMAX that was filmed oh. with IMAX cameras, like the big fills up the screen and all that. <laughs> Listen, I was beyond hyped for this film. I, I was trying to buy a t-shirt I can wear to the premiere. I couldn't find one. I went on eBay. I got my Bane shirt. I was ready to go, and I watched it. And you know what? After I watched it, I was like, you know, that was pretty good. My friend asked me, what do you rate it? I was like, uh, 89 out of 100. Then I went home. And then it was 82 out of 100. And the next day, it was a 72 out of 100. It just kept going down. <laughs> and I kept thinking of different things. I'm like, oh, I was trying so hard to love this film. And, and I just can't. I really just can't. I, I, I think it was an admiral attempt at creating a grander movie within the Dark Knight. But it is a big, bloated, sloppy mess. All right, Lee, give us your first point. Why do you think he's wrong? All right. So why I think you're wrong is like, I feel like it did... What it did very well is that it, from Christopher Nolan's, uh, from Christian Bale's Batman from the very beginning to the very end, I feel like it wrapped up his story as Batman as a very good conclusion to the entire trilogy. And I do believe they did a very good job going back to the first one and being uh, with the uh, Rachel Gould, uh, with, um, oh, they just escaped my name. Oh, the, um, the League of Shadows. You know, I think that fact that that was a good point for it to go back from mm -hmm. the very start to bring it, to, you know, from where you come from, where and where how it's gone. And I feel like they did, even though they couldn't fully do it, but a good adaption of The Dark Knight Returns, showing a broken Batman who has been beaten, who's been worn. Because this is kind of the first time out of any of the Batman films we've actually seen where we've actually seen a weary Batman, one that's actually broken even though, yeah, as you saw in the movie, your knees have no cartilage. You can't do nothing. Do not go do any skiing, barely do anything, and he's on a limb, basically. Um, and it, come on, they did so good with Bane. Bane was so good. Yes, he did sound like Sean Connery, but Tom Hardy <laughs> nailed it as ba Bane, especially the last time you look at Bane, and he just looks like a Mexican wrestler, which, yes, he does look like in the comics, but... You know, compared to, was it Batman and Robin, which I will not speak of bat nipples. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and, you know, I still, I could still see the director, uh, was it Michael Schumacher or what his name was? And he was like, oh, no, I designed it because, you know, like Greek gods and, you know, old statues and you can see their nipples and everything. I'm like, what's that got to do with Batman? What's that got to do? He's not wearing sandals. Um, 
<laughs> and all right, yeah, okay. So then let's stop there. Hold the rest of your points. I know you got. All right, right, all right, all right. Santi, go for it. What do you have to say about that? Bring it. Conceptually, this movie it does try. It does try to connect it to Razal Ghul. It does try to bring in all these different characters because Nolan had no idea what to do. He didn't want to make this movie after Heath Ledger died. Warner Brothers forced him. He's probably contractually obligated to fulfill this. And he tried to do some weird time. I mean, it just doesn't make... Batman has been away for eight years at the beginning of this movie. He was only around for, I think, one year between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight takes place like over like a week or something. He just disappears yeah. for eight That's years. a hell of a week. <laughs> I mean, what, what the heck happened? Like, how many people <laughs> still remember who this cut? Like, oh yeah, we were that crazy guy who like did some crazy stuff for for a couple of couple of years and then just disappeared for eight. It just it was just all over the place. Bane. I mean, if you heard what he was saying, I guess he was pretty good. I I, I don't think Tom Hardy. Uh, I, I, they should have given him some better steroids because he was looking pretty small to me. Especially, uh, I expected a little bit uh, him to be a little bit bigger. A little and, bit jacked. Yeah, a little bit more. I saw some back knee on him too. Uh, makeup department should have cleaned that up. Uh, but, but, but really, the, the big <laughs> issue with Bane <laughs> was the fact that they disrespected him because he just randomly gets blasted in the face by Catwoman's twin guns on her motorcycle, and then he's just gone. No death scene, nothing. He's just like, oh, and then he just he just disappears from the rest of the movie. Like that was it. You built him up this whole time. No, the villain's Talia Al Ghul, which was the worst kept secret for this entire trilogy. Everyone knew she was Talia the whole time. They tried to make it a big twist at the end when she stabs Batman. It, it was a mess. I recommend everyone listening to go watch the college humor piece of, of Batman and Talia Al Ghul. Oh, I um, love we, college we humor. I love, it is fantastic. Right. Yes, it is fantastic. Right. It is actually, true. <laughs> I absolutely love all those, all, right, all, right. all those videos. So Santi has some harsh words about <sighs> Bane, about the story, the secret. Lee, what do you got to say about that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he came in hard. I'm all not right. going to lie. So you, okay. you have a lot to back up here. <laughs> all right. Yes, Bane wasn't absolutely jacked or tr- chiseled. However... Every time he was on scene, he was still very imposing. Uh, that's what I can still say. Yes, he wasn't like he was going to be absolutely ripped, but you know, every time he was in front of his goons, every time he was in front of Batman, he was still due to the height. He was still imposing. And yes, apparently he did have to put like um, something in his shoes. So he was stolen than Christian Bale because Tom Hardy isn't that tall. <laughs> Uh, but you know he's still very powerful. You know, even when um, when he's speaking, speaking to Daggett, and he just puts his ha- hand on his shoulder, and he says to him, he's like, you know, because you paid me money, do you think this has power over me? Like I feel like that still shows you how Im- you know how immersive and how impressive he is as a villain. Yes, he did die by a random gun. Yes, I will admit that. And yes, he didn't see him ever again. And Talia. Yes, you could tell it was Talia from st- straight away. I'll give you that. I can't argue with that. You did, yeah, you knew that. Um, but, you know, it was good to see that, you know, you saw you saw the fact with Heath Ledger, you know, even though he didn't get mentioned, but it was good seeing all the after effects from what happened with The Dark Knight because it was a, such a big film. And I will admit, I will admit the sequel does, probably does a little struggle because of the massive weight of The Dark Knight. But seeing where his growth has gone, you know, it shows you as a character, as a mortal person, you know, in a real setting, the fact that, you know, he, you know, he, this is what he can do. This is what he had to do. And, you know, I don't, I still feel, feel like it fits well in the trilogy. Even though you could have fixed a couple of things. So I will, I will take that. Um, but you got, come on, you got to admit, you know, when he did the, you know, when he um, fixed his back, you know, when he got out of the hole, don't ask me how he got away from the hole into back into Gotham. I'm not going to answer that at all. Um, and then, you know, and the iconic <laughs> where you see Bane break his back. Yeah, that kind of, I got to admit, that was pretty now, cool. That's that's straight out of the that's straight out of the comic book, isn't it? Like Bane breaks the back kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, the comic it's actually based off is the fact, is you don't see it a whole lot, but Bane does a very similar thing. He takes over Gotham, and what he does is that for about a whole night, he makes all these things happen in Gotham and pushes Batman to the very limit 
So like, you know, a bomb goes off at six, you know, a robbery at seven, you know, makes him completely worn out. Then he goes in the back cave, finds him, and that's where he breaks his back because he wears out Batman completely and completely snaps him and leaves him there. Mm. Let's talk about Batman's right. back real quick. <laughs> I, I got a lot of points still left. <laughs> let's, let's talk about his back. All right, I'll give it to you. I'm not even going to bring up how he went from some hole in, I don't know, Mexico, India, wherever the hell he was. It's Bruce Wayne. He's a resourceful guy. But this guy breaks his back, and he's weaker than Bane. And what does he do? He just, like, he does some sit-ups and pull-ups, and now he's stronger, and he just goes back, and he's able to beat him. Look, I'm telling you, I've been doing pull-ups for the last few years. They don't work that quick. You, you got to really commit <laughs> to this stuff. You, you can't just do sit-ups for, like, for like a couple hours, and then you're good to go. I, I have no idea why they even show any of that stuff working out. It pisses me off. They did it in Batman and Superman 2. Ben Affleck gets out the bench press. I'm like, what are they even doing? Anyway, not to get too off the topic. I got to nah, talk nah. about... Yeah. The cops, the cops in this movie, they're sitting in the sewers for months, months in there. They probably stink. I don't even know where they're going to the bathroom. It's like poop and piss everywhere. These guys come out mm. and they're clean shaven. They look, they look <laughs> like little babies. It's like there's not a single, not a single speck of beard on them. No dirt, no grime, nothing. And then you look at all the bad guys. They all got beards and stuff. And then there's tanks. There's assault rifles and the cops have guns. And then they just start running at each other and they start fighting each other, like fist fighting, like it's a WrestleMania. Like, whoa. Like, like I said, <laughs> this movie has some excellent, I think it has some good themes. I if it was WrestleMania, ambitious. your favorite person still would have gone over. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, I just think some of the, the dialogue and the character motivations and the pacing, just, just all over the place, doesn't really come together, unfortunately, for me. Like I said, the more you can enjoy it on a surface level, but the more you think about this plot, like you can think about it in The Dark Knight uh-huh. or Batman Begins. But it somewhat makes sense there, even though it's a little silly at times. But in this movie, it, it, it just, I, I don't get it. I don't get the cop stuff. You could easily poke a hole in it. Why do these people even work for Bane? Why does that guy in the beginning sacrifice himself okay. in the plane? Like, it doesn't, it's not explained compared to, you know, the way Joker would sort of seduce people to his side and say it's not about the money and all that. But I guess Bane somehow has these magical Ra's al Ghul followers and things like that. And then Gotham City. Where are the citizens? I know they were like sitting home because they were, you know, on their curfew or whatever. It was just super weird. If, if, if you feel like it was just recorded like in a and couple bomb. of Warner Bros. Studios blocks. I did a studio tour there last year. I think I saw some <laughs> of those sites. I'm like, this, 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 like, Jim Gordon is going around one block, and the tank comes, and he goes around another block. It's like they ran out of filming scene. And one last thing I gotta say, Jim Gordon was so smart, so clever. He hit his death in the Dark Knight. He is a bumbling buffoon in this. He just got divorced. He lost the kids in the divorce. <laughs> this guy has lost his mind in this. Club. I'm telling you, he used to be so smart. He's just one step behind the whole film. Has no idea what's going on. He left the speech in his pocket, and then Bane found the speech and then read it, and people believed it. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, of all people, okay, one more okay. thing. One more thing. So, all right. of all people, <laughs> no, no. Joseph Gordon Levitt is the guy go. to figure out he's Batman because of his face. Jim Gordon had no idea. He's known him like since he was a kid. I, I, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Okay, so, all right, Lee. Santi pointed out a bunch of plot holes, a bunch of errors, and maybe some budgeting issues. What do you think? That take away from the essence of the movie for you? Do you still feel like it's one of the greatest? <laughs> well, w- well, I, I, I convinced Lee. <laughs> oh, oh, Lee. So, do you concede? <laughs> or do I concede? No, right, look, what I will say is that everything you say is valid. I would say, you know, this is, yes, you can almost argue the fact that this movie was not Christopher Nolan's passion project. Uh, This was not, you know, compared to one and two, but, you know, I feel, I will say very strongly, I do feel like they got the symbol for Batman towards the end. The fact that, you know, Batman can be anybody, that is still very strong and true in this movie. Um, and the fact that Batman can be anybody, as we've seen right at the end. Um, and, you know, I do like the fact Jim Gordon did find out that, who Batman was, even though, yes, you should have figured out earlier. Even an orphan kid could tell by a smile. I'm like, oh, look at that, <laughs> Bruce Wayne. Um, or, you know, could tell by the tan, the, uh, for the fact that you only see his mouth. But, or, no, I don't concede. Tan. I still, or the fact that, you know, uh, the billionaire, we all have tanks and everything. Where do you think all the money for that came from? I'm like, oh, yeah, Bruce Wayne owns all these. <laughs> and those tanks look just like Batman's mobile. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, yeah, I don't concede. I still give props to 
Um, props to Tom Hardy as Bane. I give it to Christian Bale. I feel like his performance was still on point from one, two, and three. I don't think he wavered. He obviously, we get material that he had. Um, obviously, Morgan Freeman was Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm. Nothing, about, nothing about the uh, nothing different about that. But I do like at the end where you could see the fact he was going to live his life that he was meant to. He did what he needed to do, and he was going to go off with Catwoman, uh, with uh, Anne Hathaway. So I did still like that. Actually, quick question. Do you guys believe that actually did happen or was that uh, Alfred's dream? Or like, was it fake? Well, it's a good question. I do want to say Alfred would never leave Batman, in my opinion. Not Michael Caine's Alfred. Whether or not he saw him in the end, I think it's real. But I hope it's not real because this is like in the middle of the parish, like by the Louvre, getting croissants and coffee, and like no one recognizes Bruce Wayne, the most eligible bachelor in the world, just just chilling there. Like I hope it's fake. I hope that wasn't. I hope it was like an Inception cop out. How, how does no one know who he is? He's just sitting there. It's, it makes no sense. It's interesting. It's interesting that you guys bring that up because there was an interview with Christian Bale. I don't know if this is what you're mentioning, uh, Lee, but Christian they brought it up saying, "What do you think? Do you think this was Alfred's dream or is this real life?" And Christian Bale did bring up saying that he personally believes that it was real life, that that's the life that Alfred wanted him to live. It, it had to be, too, because in the movie, they're talking about autopilot with uh, yeah. Morgan Freeman's character. He keeps asking if the autopilot fix, so he was able to leave uh, you know, the plane before it blew up and, uh, I don't know, do Batman things and magically survive and go off to Paris and drink a coffee and know the same <laughs> coffee shop that... Alfred was going to be at. So what do you think, Lee? Was it, did, in your opinion, you think it's a dream? You think it was real life? What do you think? I think I think it was real life. I think it was real life, the fact that he he was with uh, Catwoman. The fact that that's how he, he did end. You know, he kind of... To me, you saw the character of Bruce Wayne go through this entire journey. You know, he became a symbol. He knows that the symbol of Batman will be carried on with somebody else so he can go live his life. He's fulfilled his promise to his parents so he can go live free and so can Alfred, you know, if Alfred doesn't have to worry about him anymore um, and, you know, and go away. So I feel like it was very real. It, it probably didn't, probably what didn't help is that with any other director, I think Amo would say that that was real but because after the swing you got in the inception, mm-hmm. that's what put that scene in doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think it was real too. I, 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 I got to say one last thing. Oh, no, no, okay. no, no. Go right. ahead. He he wants the final word. All no, right. I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna sort of say a quote from the movie. So Andrew, you you basically tell me like Lee comes here and he's like, hey, I'm here to say why the Dark Knight Rises is a good movie. And my response is to quote Batman. No, I came here to stop you. One of the great lines <laughs> in television history, spoken <laughs> spoken from Batman to Bane. Um, I mean, what a great comeback. I came here to stop you. Yeah. I, I just can't stop thinking about it. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. So we heard good points on both sides, everyone. I'm sure everyone who listened loves everything Santi said, loves everything Lee said. But with that, I want to think possibly a draw here. Good points on both sides. So, Leek, it's customary here at Tickets for Two that at the end of discussing a movie, we do give it our rating. So... Out of five, what would you give The Dark Knight Rises? I would give The Dark Knight. I'll give The Dark Knight Rises. I'll give it three tickets. Three out three of five. Three tickets out of five. Oh, I love that. Interesting. Yeah. How about you, Santi? What do you give The Dark Knight Rises? Well, it's kind of awkward because I was going to give it a three and a half out of five. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to give it now. Do you want to <laughs> stick with that? <laughs> Listen, I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll my my points in the debate are serious, I'll, but I will still I will always fanboy for that trilogy and for Nolan, but I just try not oh, to think I just yeah. try not to think about it too hard. But the more I like, <laughs> if I actually think about it critically, then it falls to like a, a two and a half. Yeah, and that okay. I, that makes sense, and I like I get that. It's almost this, it's almost the same thing when you think about uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, mm, yeah the more and, you think uh, about it, the we, score keeps going down. I enjoyed that one. I know, uh, I enjoyed you guys' that's episode. For, that's for a whole another day. <laughs> yeah, Andrew's well, like, you, well, he's, he's like a, you know, like, you know, they, they say like Star Wars fans are toxic, but Andrew, like, he knows all this stuff about Marvel, oh, Secret Wars and all that. But then when the movies actually come out, he just like shits on it, like, constantly. <laughs> like, do you even I enjoy this stuff a... at this point? <laughs> I have a bad taste of Marvel in my mouth right now, but when we get to the Comic-Con <sighs> section of today's podcast, we'll definitely dive into what we all feel. So with that being said, let's move on to the next segment here, which 
was it's kind of an interesting idea that Santi brought up, which I'm happy to talk with all of you about. Is there one movie that you guys can pick that if you recasted the main character, it would make it significantly better? Let's go around the table and we'll begin with you, Lee. Do you have one in mind? I do. And like I th- I thought about this when you messaged me the other day. I'm thinking, and all I could think of was good movies where – you know, the actor has actually been changed and it was for the better, you know, like, for example, you know, Back to the Future um, and, you know, where they actually, oh, it's another one I can think of, like Indiana Jones, I think that there was an actor, but then it got changed to somebody else. But one, two movies that come to mind, the first one is Batman v Superman, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. That's a mm, good pick. Good one, yeah. I feel like you could have literally got anybody else to do the, that role, he he was not Lex Luthor. You were some punk kid. And it pains me to this day that all the rumors leading up to that was the fact it was going to be Brian Cranston. And if Brian Cranston wow. was Lex Luthor, that, that would have made a massive difference, I feel. Like, can you imagine Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor going up that against Henry good. Cavill's Superman in those scenes? No, that's a good not one. Good. I, like I like that, that one. I wasn't thinking about that at all, but I think it's really good. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> but I, Jesse Eisenberg, just, oh, God, that was just... Yeah, you know, looking back at clips about him, oh, yeah, something about his acting in that movie was, like, really throwing me off. Like, I don't know what he was trying to portray there. So I totally agree with you. If we could have recasted Jesse Eisenberg, that would have been a good one. Yeah, Did he ever show up again in that whole series or like the whole DC universe? Was that it? Uh, Justice League uh, at the end of the Justice oh, League movie, and then that's it. Yeah, that was because he was trying to assemble like the the League of some like supervillain group, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. The Legion of Doom. Yeah, there it is. That's the name. Man, I, I'm not that big of a DC fan, so <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. But yeah, that's oh, true. Even even people who are DC fans aren't a fan of DC right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's like how, that's how i feel about marvel but again we're gonna dive into that later but uh all right that's good i like that santi do you have a, a movie in mind that you, you would pick that you would recast the main actor i do i have, I have a if i'm going with one movie and here's the thing this might be the best performance of this actor's life but there's just something Ooh. about it i can't get over it it's mark Wahlberg and boogie nights i just i, I don't Ooh, know what it is a deep just, cut man wow <laughs> he's no. good in it but I just feel like it could have been better with someone else. I wish I had someone in mind. I don't right now. But does he give a good performance? Yes. Is he a little too old for the role at first? Yeah, that's not a big deal. That's kind of how movies were back in the day. The performance is good, but it's one of those that I feel like the movie's not great because of him. And maybe a different actor could have elevated it. But I will also say, in addition to that, aside from uh, Boogie Nights, I think John Krasinski should be recast in anything he's in because i just can't take his face seriously like he they keep putting him in all these like amazon prime i don't know <laughs> tom clancy yeah make bullshit stuff and it's just like dude this is the guy <laughs> from the fucking office is jim like just get him out of here i can't take this guy seriously he's a cl- he's a clown don't don't bring him back as reed richards please don't do it funny you say that because you know what he almost played no he was almost captain america Oh god! Oh, that's right, man. I forgot about that fun fact. Yeah, like he almost he went out with the role with Chris Evans, and I think he was uh, the second or third pick. Yeah, he even went as far as even trying on the suit. I think now that I remember. Yeah, yeah, yep. Even when he put on the suit, you, you know who that's... was probably the second pick for uh, what's the guy's name in Guardians of the Galaxy? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah. And in Jurassic World, same guy. Uh, t- I yeah, his name Dennis Reddell from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Apparently, almost <laughs> got that role, which I love that show, and I would have loved to have him be there. But I think they, for Guardians of the Galaxy, they got it right. Andrew, what's your okay. pick? What's my pick? So I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, and I'm gonna bring up a future movie. It's funny that we bring Ooh. up Chris Pratt because I think if we could change the Mario movie, that's gonna be coming <laughs> out, and, and we could take out I Chris Pratt. I felt like you were gonna say that. <laughs> Because I feel like if we could at least you know switch them with Charles Marinette, the guy who actually voices Mario, um, because we already know that Chris is probably gonna butcher the accent or maybe even be borderline offensive a little bit. Um, I know we what Charles is gonna be, keep voicing like Wario in that movie, but like come on, yeah, man, I feel like this, this this might be like a Sonic situation where like the moment we hear the Mario voice, we're gonna start bullying the studio to fix something <laughs> like that. That's kind of how I feel this is gonna yeah. go. I went, yeah, look, when he got announced as Mario, my first thing was, what the, 
what the actually i forgot like, yeah you guys you guys do swear on your show don't you yeah here and there. we do but it's funny because like there's a little box that we click when we upload our episodes and says is there any explicit material so we always keep it unchecked but we still throw in a few words here and there <laughs> oh, okay. um i was instantly like what the what the fuck like what out of you're telling me out of all the cast in hollywood besides the main dude that already is alive that can do the voice of Mario, you pick Chris Pratt. Of it all people. <laughs> well, what did, what did the guy say? He's really cool. The, the Nintendo CEO. <laughs> yeah. He's a oh, really yeah, cool that's guy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, Which... a, it's a weird pick, but I'm willing, I'm always saying, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a bit of a shill, but I'm willing to wait and see how it looks and sounds like before I, uh, I fully judge it. But yeah, it would have been nice to just bring back, what, Charles Martinet? Just have him yeah. do it. I feel like during the Guardians press tour, we're going to get a lot of questions about Chris Pratt's uh, Mario voice. So I really hope something slips out. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I have no doubt. And I would feel sorry for Charles as well. Like, hey, I'm still alive and I'm still doing the character right now. And better than most others. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, okay. I love Uh, that. Thank you guys for, you know, giving me your ideas. That was really cool. Really fun. But all right, let's move on to the next thing we got going on here on our schedule, which I'm having a good time so far. Lee, how are you doing? I'm loving this. I'm loving this debate. This is awesome. Santa, you having a good uh, time? I'm having yeah, a great time. I'm a little a hungry, time. but that's because I, I, I skipped dinner. I, skipped <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I came here from somewhere, but besides that, I'm all right. I'm, I'm letting the hunger of the debate uh, keep me going. I promise I'm going to take you out to dinner after this. Don't worry. <laughs> I hope so. We'll get some 24-hour <laughs> Mexican food. <laughs> Oh, uh, I wish I could join right. you guys. Uh, one day we'll have That'll like a, awesome, a big yeah. pod meetup. <laughs> Don, Comic Con next year. Comic-Con I will see you there. We we are actually planning to go. So if you show up, Lee, let's do like an impromptu panel somewhere in an empty room and see who shows up. <laughs> Done. We'll do that. I know that awesome. I know the nerd dose guys will would love to rock up too. Oh my god! And fun, funny enough, for anyone listening, Santi and I will just say this now: we are planning, we are scheduled to bring the nerd dose guys <gasps> on our show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're really <sighs> excited for that. That's awesome! I can't wait to hear that one. And we're we're really excited too. But uh, okay, that, that's just a little teaser. Let's move on to the next thing we yeah. got going on here. Move on. <laughs> so okay, of all the Marvel characters that we've seen so far, let's let's talk about the ones in movies and Disney Plus shows. Out of all of them, which Marvel character do you think deserves a spinoff? And do you think it's either going to be a movie or should it be a Disney Plus show? What do you think, Lee? I, I have two. One that's currently active, one that's on its way. Uh, okay. Now, the this character, I do believe she should get her own movie. She's had her own Disney Plus show, but I do believe she her own movie. Wanda, Scarlet Witch, should have her own movie, but only when the X-Men are like, fully introduced into the MCU. Mm, I feel like okay. with her character, you know, what her power level is right now and how enriched, like, obviously she's in the comics with the X-Men, Mutants, and, and Magneto, I feel like you could really make a movie about her. I have no doubt that Elizabeth Olsen could carry it. Don't know who would be the villain of it, but I feel like her discovering all the mutants, everything that's been going on, you know, and the fact that, you know, her power level, whoever you pick to be the villain, would just be you know, outstanding to watch. Oh, I love that. That's a good, good pick. pick. Yeah. Um, so, and my second yeah. one is, whenever the time comes, depending, is Doctor Doom, Disney Plus TV show. Oh, sure. Ooh, like, like from his okay. perspective? From his, yeah, from his perspective. Mm-hmm. Before bumping into the Fantastic Four or anything like that, I think that would be a really good, like, you know, six or six episodes see how he's been weaved into the MCU, you know, how he got his powers and everything. Uh, you know, obviously, he owns a freaking castle and an army. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sure you can tell me you can make a show about that. <laughs> I'm really worried that the day that we get Doctor Doom, they're going to cop out and they're going to say, oh, this he was a former Tony Stark engineer employee. I feel like I, oh. I really hope they don't cop out and go that direction. I hope it's like something original. Didn't they already do that? It used to be in Iron Man. They did that 3, with uh, kind of? They did that with Iron Man three and with uh, Mysterio. Yeah. Oh yeah. But Mysterio. Bar. I, I like because I'm not as familiar with the comics or anything in the stories like uh-huh. Andrew. So when that twist happened in uh, Far From Home, I was like, "That's great. I love that." I feel like the twist was better in Far From Home than Iron Man three. 
Mm-hmm. No, nah, yeah, I think it fit better too, especially being yeah. a Spider-Man movie too. Yeah. Okay, Santi, um, what would you want to see a spin-off for a movie or TV show for? I, I, I want you to go first this time, Andrew. Okay, thank Ooh. you. I was afraid you'd yeah. take my option. I was yeah, kind of scared yeah, for a second. <laughs> um, so for me, I personally think it's time that we get a Wong spin-off, and I think yes. it should be yes. done. Yes, <laughs> I think it should be done in either a show or a bunch of Marvel shorts. I feel like we need to get a lot more insight on this Wong cinematic universe that's going on in the background because he's been single-handedly carrying this entire Phase 4 on his back. Like, he's in every single movie connecting everything together. So I would personally think that seeing a Wong adventure, like, where he's going all his portals, would be a nice nice little addition to Disney's uh, repertoire. I I think Wong is is a fun character in his movies. I wish there was more of him. You know, when he mm-hmm. shows up, he's funny. He's also, I like the fact that he's the leader of that, I don't know, that Buddhist community. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the fact that he's the leader. I feel like that's such a cop-out whenever it's like, oh, like, Dr. Strange is the leader. It's like, no, he's not. He's, like, second in charge or just a regular person. But Wong's the charge. You know, if he's the leader, you know, give him a spin-off. It'd be fun to watch. Yeah, he's mm. he's a, also supreme because of the technicality. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, really? the, the the dust of five years. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> 100% agree with you. Wong needs his own Disney Plus show. Because, you know, it's funny because you look back and, you know, he was, oh, he was still one of the main characters in Doctor Strange. But then you look right now, he is everywhere Phase 4. He's literally Nick Fury right now. That's a good comparison. That's true. He really is the Nick Fury of Phase 4. That's a, wow, I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> that's funny. All right, Santi, what would, what would you say? What's your pick? So I would go with Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I think now that she's man. not with, nice. she's not with the crew, it'd be a good time to kind of explore and see what she's up to. She's I guess she's had like her memory wipe and just kind of go through that. It doesn't have to be some prequel crap with her and Thanos. I'm not interested in seeing that, but just to kind yeah. of something spin off to kind of connect the dots with maybe I don't know what's gonna happen in Guardians three. She could have come back probably her on her own little adventures. Probably not a movie, maybe like a mini series, but it's just interesting because it could be kind of self contained. It doesn't have to be about anything world ending, just a really good action, you know, short series featuring Gamora and all of these, you know, cool, colorful locations that you see in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's my MCU pick. If I have to go just Marvel in general, then it's definitely going to be uh, Daphne Keen from Logan. She was oh, uh, right. oh my god, name? yes, yeah, Laura yes. or, or X X twenty three. I don't know what she's called. X twenty three. X twenty three. X twenty three. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate, you know. I know, you know, Disney bought Fox and all that. So, but but Logan was just so good, and she was just such a star in that film. It's just surprising that they never even considered making some form of a spinoff with her. And forget the kids; those kids were annoying. But just her and you know, going around doing crazy werewolf <laughs> they, shit. They tried their best. <laughs> yeah, those, those kids were annoying. But it, just with her, like, I'm just surprised they haven't done anything. I wouldn't be surprised if she comes back um, once Disney starts introducing the X-Men. But that, that's uh, been some I, rumors that I've been hearing is that instead of recasting for a Wolverine, that they just throw in Daphne Keene as the, the X-23. But that's just from what I've been hearing. I wouldn't be disappointed. I, I would not be disappointed if they told us that we will not be seeing – a Wolverine, we would be. She will be the Wolverine moving forward in the MCU. I think I'd be satisfied. I don't think I'd be disappointed at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that'd be a good, good way to um, include her, and that, that'd be a great way to connect everything. But the, the thing that I'm worried about is if they do bring her in and make that whole movie, you know, canon and all that, and then if the day that we see a Deadpool movie. I, I, there's a lot of talk about Deadpool or Ryan Reynolds trying to bring on, you know, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine one last time. Then that kind of messes up the continuity. So I, I'm not yeah. too sure what they're trying to do here. Just let him die with Logan. It was a good ending. He had a good That's run with said. Fox. Just just yeah. let it go. I can That's what I, I cannot fault Logan. I cannot fault Logan at all. I've watched that movie multiple times. I even made my partner who hasn't seen has only seen X Men one and two, and I said to her, I was like, You just need to watch this. Yeah. Just don't, don't think of anything else. We just watch this entire movie. And even at the end of it, she was like, that was really good. And that was really fucking sad. It, it, it made me a, cry in the theaters, film. man. It's a great film. And I really hope um, we get more quality films like that from, from Disney with their control mm-hmm. of X-Men. Because I feel like Fox was a little inconsistent 
with with you know it's the X Men universe, but at the same time, you get some gems like Logan, X Men Two, um, Days of Future Past. But especially Logan just stands out because it's not just a great comic book movie; it's just a great film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. film film in general, like just like yeah, like old like old western, you know, the solo outing, last final run kind of movie, yeah. you know, and it's. Maybe when I try, when I did a review on it, uh, I mentioned about it, I was like, I would don't look at this as a comic book movie. I put that almost at the end. And this is actually a superhero comic book movie. Same thing akin to like the Batman, like a comic book superhero movie. Those words you think at the end. Everyone who's listening, that's what we think should deserve a Marvel spinoff. So if any of you have a different idea, please let us know. You know, send us a message, DM us on Instagram. Lee has in his Instagram page, uh, Lights Camera Ran. I'm sure um, if you want to plug that real fast, Lee. Oh, yeah, at Lights Camera Ran, LCR. And, yeah, if anything that you anything you hear with just right now that you agree or disagree, please message. And especially if you think we're wrong, 100%. We'd love to debate. Mm-hmm. Oh, we do love a debate. <laughs> so uh, let us know what you think. So we're going to move on to our final topic of the episode where we're going to dive in to some major Comic Con news. I know we all were glued to our our phones, our Twitter feeds, everything, trying to see what was coming. Um, Santi and I have actually been like what we were at Comic Con for two years in a row, you and I, but you were three years in a row, like right? Four years in a row total. Um, total, your brother. Yeah. But yeah, I think two years with you. And then we were so like, in, we were in line for Hall H. We saw some Marvel news, so we were getting a little bit of FOMO. Uh, when we were seeing uh, all the news coming out. But yeah. before we get into all the exciting stuff that we know we're ready to bring up, let's address a couple things real fast. Um, we got a sneak peek at John Wick 4, which I personally am a huge fan of. Did you guys get a chance to see that real quick? I've only yeah. seen the first one. So I can't remember. Uh, what? <laughs> Come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been slacking. Yeah, one's enough. It's, it's all fine. the same story, right? Well, yeah, it's one's fine. But did you? Like, what, what do you think, uh, Lee? Kind of excited to see how this is going to go or maybe possibly end? I am so excited for John Wick. And you know what? The funny thing is I missed the f- first one when it came out. I didn't jump on board it until uh, John Wick 2. I had a mate who said, I was like, oh, you know, John Wick's out. And he's like, have you seen the first one? I'm like, no. And he's like, you need to go watch it. You know, if you do, clear your schedule. You need to go watch it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, all right. I'll, I'll go watch it. And after I'm like, this is the best action movie of the 21st century. And for anyone who's an animal lover, you're going to love John Wick. <laughs> That's what I feel every time Like I'm, I'm walking my dog. I'm like, if anyone even dares touch him, I'm going to go full John Wick on them. Like, I'm going to make sure they get what they deserve. <laughs> yeah, but... 100%. Yeah, you go after the whole mob, you go after the dad, like, you go after everything. the son, <laughs> the high table, everybody. <laughs> so we also got a, a good look at the Dungeons & Dragons trailer. So I'm not a big you know, player of it. I don't really know much about it. But I think the movie looks kind of interesting. Santi, do you, do you know more about Dungeons & Dragons? I'm not calling you out as like one of the <laughs> players but i think you know more about that stuff than i do i i have dabbled in uh you dabbled (laughs) here and there the movie the trailer looks actually pretty good i'm a little confused on is it just a fantasy movie or is it gonna reveal that people are role playing i I think it has to reveal that right because what's the point otherwise it's just like you know like a regular fantasy yeah i i kind of got that too i kind of like i thought oh i have no doubt towards the end it will be like have you guys seen like the lego movie i have yes (laughs) yeah you know when like halfway through it pops out the fact it's just the kid playing yeah you you think that'll happen that's That's where i'm kind of think that will happen is like you're three quarters away through the movie it will pop out and you actually see that everyone's around a table and that those actors that are playing all those characters, they're actually playing the game for real. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's it. You just followed the whole movie for us, Lee. That's oh, so God, no. <laughs> see, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez and all those characters. Like, yeah, they're going to be at a table having some beers or whatever. Playing yeah. D&D. Spoiler alert. Good. Besides all that, I think it looks really like a good like fantasy action film. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, me too. I think I'm definitely gonna go watch that as like a fun movie. You know, a good fun one. You know, like you know, feels good in the feels. Gets your little heartstrings, whatever it is. But it definitely is like a good a good movie from 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 the outside perspective. Because yeah, I never played. But yeah, okay, we'll move. On. There's one thing I want to bring up before we get into the nitty gritty. It's really interesting how during Comic Con and especially the WB or DC panels, they really avoided 
talking anything about Aquaman or the Flash movies, you know, for obvious reasons. But do you think it was more obvious that they ignored it or should they have just like faced the music and just owned up to it and talked about it anyways? What do you guys think? I feel like they should. It, I feel like it's more stands out a lot more than um, that they didn't say anything at all. Mm. Which I even I thought I was like really nothing like not even like you know a, not even you didn't even release a poster for Aquaman That's you know true. you didn't even yeah. you didn't even get anything about you know not a new poster for the Flash not even like uh, Matt Reeves or um, Robert Pattinson just popping up and saying oh look like we can also we don't have a poster we don't have a name but we can also tell you that the Batman two is in production. Now, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, all you got was uh, Black Adam and Shazam. That was essentially, I was like, cool. We've already got the full trailer for that. We've already got the full poster for that. Yeah. Uh, the trailer for Shazam, we're like, we got it. But at the same time, like, that, that like, honestly, Shazam is going to be absolutely murdered at the box office at mm-hmm. the end of this year. Do you know why? It, it's going up against who? Remind me. Remind me. It's going up against Avatar 2. Well, I thought it got oh. moved. It hasn't got moved yet? No, no. So the Flash was meant to come out in November. And so for some stupid reason, because WB doesn't know what they're doing, they moved the Flash back. And Shazam was meant to come out in Feb. And they brought Shazam forward. And now oh, it's going up against yeah. Avatar. Dude, Shazam 1 was already a box office struggle. So yeah. This is yeah. Th- this is not a look, uh, a good look for them. Do you think that because of the Warner Brothers Discovery kind of merger, that that's why they're they're still kind of figuring out who's going to be leading these next projects, and uh, maybe it's caused complications with their plans? Because I agree, it was just they came out pretty flat. Not even a Superman mm-hmm. two. I know that was rumored with Henry Cable returning. It's like it's a bunch of stuff we already knew. Like that's it. Still no plan forward. No, no, unless they're like, this was another thing I mentioned uh, in my last episode was the fact, uh, I, are they just holding everything for the DC Phantom event? Like, are they really just trying to jam pack yeah. that with everything that they've just left Comic-Con with everyone going, huh, DC, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's so much negative you know, press and a lot of negative articles surrounding Aquaman and the Flash right now. I feel like the least they could have done was give us something new and fresh so that we have like a better taste of it in our mouths. I feel like right now they're really pushing their luck with having us just think of it in a bad light. So if they if they threw yeah. a thing a little bone our way, we could have probably, you know, thought differently, like, oh maybe I will give it a try now. Maybe I won't think it's so bad or a failure. So I was I was really disappointed about them, you know, tiptoeing around it. I was unfortunate about it. But all right, let's move on to what we all love to talk about. So Lord of the Rings, Lord <laughs> of the Rings, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Actually, speaking uh, of Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, both their prequel shows come out at the end of this year. Yeah, one month for Lord, uh, Game of Thrones, and then month after Lord of the Rings could be interesting. Yeah, to, uh, see too. But Andrew wants to get to his. Dumb superhero no, was, talk. So let's only let him do it. because I I have never seen a full Lord of the Rings Ooh. movie all the way through. What? I've never seen I've never seen Game of Thrones. So that's another reason why I'm just avoiding it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you to that. I haven't watched Game of Thrones, um, but I have at least watched Lord of the Rings. Okay, you have that on me, man. Like I don't know. It just it, they're so long to me, and like I've never read a book. I, I don't know much about the lore. I don't know anything, so to me, I feel like if I dive right into it, I'll just be lost. Nah, you, you just got. You just need to watch the movies. Movies yeah. covers everything you need to know. I gotta say real quick before you get into the uh, Marvel Hall H for Lord of the Rings, the the Rings of Power show. It, it's just getting on my nerves. Like whenever there's a trailer or anything like that, everyone in the comments for YouTube, Instagram, wherever they're just like, "Oh, mid looks trash. It's gonna be bad." It's like you know what? It might be bad. You might be right. It might be terrible. Huge waste of Jeff Bezos' money. But it also <laughs> might be good. Are we, are we not going to wait and watch at least a few episodes or one season before we judge it? There, there's so many shows out there. People are like, oh, wait till season two, three. It gets it gets better. It's like now we're just judging shows off trailers. And it's just, you know, it's just like people want this show to fail. It's like, let's just watch it. Just watch it. See if it's good. You know, is, is the storytelling good? Is the dialogue good? Is it full of emotional moments? But yeah, people just want to you know, react to everything. I was going to get that off my chest, Andrew and Lee. All right, back to the No, topic. no, I, I agree with you. No one wants to give anything a chance 
anymore. Um, they're just ripping on it. And I've, it's, the thing is, with Lord of the Rings trailer, I've seen nothing but hate for it. Nothing about character designs and everything about it. I'm just like, at least let the first, yeah, let the pilot come out yeah. before you rip it. Yeah, I was going to say, now that we're on this topic here, do you feel like this show is going to be catered towards like just like hardcore fans or for newcomers alike? What do you guys think? Because like, maybe I'll jump into it. Maybe we could talk well, about it on the well, pod, I think, but I just don't know. I think know. anyone could listen to this episode of the Tickets for Two podcast. I think we covered a lot of different topics. Um, so, yeah, I think this was an, a, a casual podcast. Is that what you're saying, Andrew? Oh, I'm talking about the Rings show, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, oh, you I, actually it, made me believe that. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll, 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 um, it could be hardcore for people who want it to be hardcore, but it's gonna be for people who just they just want to make their own version of Game of Thrones and like a hit show. So yeah, you don't need to have watched anything to watch this, in my opinion. You, you think so, Lee? Uh, I think so. I think it's literally just Amazon's, uh, Amazon's uh, response to Game of Thrones. That's at the end of the day, I feel like that's the biggest moving moving forward for it. But uh, Andrew, I think if you do get time, like I'm not really big into Lord of the Rings. You know, I haven't gone and back and watched them, but they are a cinematic event just all through to watch. Just visually, the the action, the story, everything. Like it's a it's a it's a trilogy. It's like one of those must see trilogies when you speak to someone saying you know. You know, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, like that's in the same breath now. Oh, okay. Okay, I like that. All right, you're convincing me. I know Santi's been trying to convince me for a while, but I think you're the mm-hmm. one that did. <laughs> so. All right, it doesn't matter whoever does it. All right, let's, let's, let's get to the end of this. For, I want to say right now for everyone listening, we're going to switch to a Marvel real quick, but we need to all come together and realize that we should never, ever believe any leaks – or rumors, <laughs> nah. or anything that comes out of a mouth of a Twitter random page. Because look what happened. Including Nothing ours. Nothing came through. <laughs> including <laughs> ours. <laughs> no, no, no. You should listen to us. Because <laughs> you should listen to us because yeah. then you can come back and argue against us. <laughs> I, I feel like what I hated the most was a lot of people on you know TikTok, Twitter, they were just trying to be the first ones to you know spill some you know leaks some rumors and none of it came true and that no. really bothered me Did, how, how'd you feel about all that lee i i will be honest i told for three episodes each going into leave this i was telling everyone to keep their expectations low because i knew the d23 is in like i think a month mm-hmm. or so so i was fully expecting us to get a couple new trailers and that was it but like I saw, there was a leak for Doctor Doom, and there was a leak for X Men, and there was a leak for something else. I'm like, even I know that's all complete bullshit. I'm like, you guys, yeah. this is just spam. This is not going to happen. And I can tell there was a leak for of Doctor Doom. I'm like, that looks all fake. There is no way that Marvel <laughs> is going to have a comic book accurate looking Doctor Doom suit. They're going to alter yeah. it. Yeah, that um, was a huge thing for me. I did not like it. What, 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 I know, Santi, you and I were going back and forth about the reel that we were making, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, just, you know, in general, um, a lot of, you know, programs and pages and content is just developed. You know, it, it's it's kind of giving news, which is fine. But, you know, what we, I think all of us like about this podcast format is it's not just about repeating news or rumors or leaks that you see because that's you know it might increase your dopamine levels but it doesn't really tell you anything of substance so i think you know podcasts like ours lights camera rant nerdos and many of the other ones it, it's important to you know listen to people give their opinions on things even if they're you know you might not agree with them that kind of substance is starting to kind of fade away from the entertainment industry and it's just all about you know getting clicks and you know what's most attractive um oh let's do these crazy rumors about this you know new marvel movie people like that and you know it's exciting talk, discussing hypotheticals but it's not discussing hypotheticals it's like misleading people mm, um yeah but but i feel yeah. like you know feige brought it um I, I thought it was a great show they they gave us a lot um you know some things we expected and some things that were trademarked the day before that we still kind of expected <laughs> but <laughs> it, yeah. it was still cool to see it on screen i, I thought it was a great show I, yeah, did you have a good time, Lee? Watch, uh, watching all the Comic Con? Oh, watching it from a distance and, and having massive <laughs> yeah. FOMO. Um, until next year when we all meet up. Yeah, until yeah, until next year, yes. 
Um, but like Sonny, like uh, to add to what you just said, I fully agree with you regarding you know creating that clickbait. And I think a big thing that adds to that is TikTok. Mm-hmm. I think TikTok is uh, actually ex- blown that out of proportion because you can post a minuteless TikTok, um, just about you know, a leak or anything, just to get that you know that that dopamine of multiple licks. When everything you've just said is complete bullshit. Like none of that's mm-hmm. no, that's true. And then the thing is, from that, people are going to reply to you again and again and rip on you because you were wrong. And, and it kind um, of ruins your credibility. Yeah, yeah no one's going to trust you. Yeah, watching a year like Andrew's like Star Wars and Marvel crossover guys. Luke Skywalker is going to be <laughs> in, in <laughs> Avengers uh, <laughs> King Dynasty. <laughs> he's going to be to find Iron Doctor Man Who. armor. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Oh my god, I would watch that. Uh, Comic Con, I was completely and utterly blown away. I was just the fact of everything that got announced was so much. And when I was watching on my phone, watching it, uh, because I had a friend who was actually in Hall H and he was texting me at the same time everything was getting announced. Nice, and I was like, What? He's like, yeah, they've just shown Secret Wars. They've just shown Ant-Man. I'm like, what? He's like, Kang rocked up. I'm like, keep texting me. Don't stop. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the most of all, I was not expecting to get announcement of Avengers 5 and 6. That was huge, it's, especially with titles, too, of all things. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, uh, yeah. I was surprised because Marvel kind of burned themselves with um, Infinity War. And Endgame, too. Like, everyone's expecting something huge. So I think they knew that if they left it, like, no titles, we would have revolted. Like, we need something. <laughs> mm, 100%. And but Kevin Foggy yeah. literally just walked in and was like, boom, here you go, you nerds. This this is what you've been waiting for. But uh, well, what I want to know real quick, so give me, like, off the top of your head right now, like, the top three things that you're excited for in the entire Phase 5. All right, number one, number one is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I feel yes. like that... Now, I mentioned this the other day. I, I I want to know if you, Andrew, if you think the same thing, but I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy will be the biggest emotional roller coaster of next year of MCU films and TV shows. Like, that mm-hmm. will be the most gut-wrenching. Man, yeah, I, was I was telling Santi... James, I was, yeah, I was James telling Santi that I was going to... I was going to cry. I'm going to cry during Rocket's you know, origin story or his possible death. I already know that's going to hurt me. (laughs) Because even James Gunn said it. He's like, this is the last time you will see the team all together. I'm like, does that mean just the movie? Does that mean someone's going (laughs) to die? (laughs) Give it. Come on, man. Be nice to me. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Uh, But yeah, I think Guns Galaxy is number one for me. Uh, Number two, uh, out out of curiosity, um secret invasion uh just Ooh, yes. see how that gets placed and everything um i think that curiosity secret invasion um three no, i'm gonna, I'm gonna mention the avengers films because i feel like that's all above board but number three is ant-man quantum mania seeing kang above all else and seeing how he how he's going to be introduced because as far as we know at this stage, that is going to be his second appearance. We don't know if he's going to appear in Loki Season 2, and he's going to obviously be appearing in Kang Dynasty. But I'm sure, I have no doubt, he will appear again. But getting a full-fledged movie with this character of this person who's going to F up the Avengers in a whole movie moving forward, which will lead to you know Incursion and Secret mm-hmm. Wars, that's yeah. also got my curiosity. Nice. I like that. All right, Santi, give me your top three things that you'll... Uh... You, you, you're excited to see from the Phase 5. Yeah, I got to ditto Lee and go with Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I think getting James Gunn back after the Suicide Squad was a great, you know, recovery for Disney. And just to have to be able to see him wrap up his, you know, kind of story and world there. It's going to be it's going to be a great film. I think it'll, uh, I'm, fingers crossed, one of the best MCU films. Um, I think this mm-hmm. is Phase 5. I don't say low-key Season 2. I'm uh, excited yeah. to see. I think uh, Owen Wilson was the best part of that show and him and Tom Hiddleston's interactions. And then he kind of disappeared for um, the clone Loki in, in the last few episodes. So if he's back and it's kind of a little bit of a reset in that universe, I'm really excited for. And I will say the last thing I'm excited for is 
don't know if this counts. I don't think it does. But unannounced projects when we got to see the Avengers, um, Kang Dynasty, and the Secret Wars. There was a whole. And it was Fantastic Four. There was a whole bunch of missing stuff in that poster yeah, and movies and shows. Like, what are the, what are they? Is it going to be X Men? Like, you know, what are we looking forward to? I think just future announcements. So I'm excited for future a future announcements. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, like, they've confirmed. I think there's like about, I think, four or five dates that they've actually confirmed, but there is no. They didn't announce it last. Um, they didn't announce it last weekend, but they've said that these dates where where movies are coming out. Um, and I have to agree with you, Santi. Probably the mo- one movie that did not get announced that I am most excited for is Deadpool three. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Long, long forgotten That's... about Deadpool ever since uh, Disney and, and the, the buying Fox. It's like we got Deadpool, then Deadpool two, and then it's just like done. Didn't hear from them again. And it's funny because like I was reading a report that Kevin Feige is trying to make Daredevil, or I'm sorry, not Daredevil, uh, Deadpool, um, like a, a thing for Marvel. Like they want that to be like the standard for future R-rated films. So Kevin Feige said that. So I'm kind of excited to see that how seriously they're going to take you know like r-rated films in the future why don't you make a tiktok about it andrew get a get a bunch of get us a bunch of clicks say uh, <laughs> have you heard what feige said about daredevil <laughs> daredevil 3 confirm question deadpool mark, question mark. <laughs> or deadpool sorry not daredevil. Yeah, see, no, no, i still say daredevil <laughs> and they he kevin feige also said the fact that he wants this to be on the same level as civil war um infinity war like the third you know, Ragnarok, he wants it to be at the same level, which completely excites me. But most of the thing that excites me out of anything is just seeing Deadpool interact with the MCU and become self-aware. I'm like, this isn't Fox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be hilarious. Yeah. All right, let, let me uh, give my quick Andrew. three. Uh, yeah. So for sure, out of the whole, like, uh, Phase 5 that, that was announced... Um, I think we're all in agreement here. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, for me, I, I think my, my top two favorite characters in Marvel have always been Rocket Raccoon and Doctor Strange. So mm-hmm. seeing Rocket's origin story finally come to fruition here has got me excited. And then for sure, number two is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Um, Lee, Santi, did you guys get a chance to see like the leaked trailer that was uh, that was shown from Comic-Con? You're you're asking us you're asking us for the you know what we you know our podcast yes of course I saw the leak trail oh, okay, good, 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 good. I don't do anything illegal Andrew so no the, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I think I sent in the I think I sent you something oh no I didn't send it to you so he have you seen it though the 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 leak trailer because I haven't seen it <laughs> oh, oh no, he's a little, yeah, at least seen okay fine so I'm excited yeah. after seeing that that makes me really excited for it. And the third thing that I'm really um, ready for um, is Daredevil. I love that they announced an 18 mm-hmm. series Daredevil, but I am just really, really scared that they're gonna ruin it. And everything that they built on Netflix, I feel like that's the perfect, perfect character, and I'm scared if they're gonna make them just like a comedic punching bag, like they did for Thor and for everybody else. <laughs> is it a continuation yeah. of that story from Netflix, or is it something new? The title is Born Again, so I yeah. want to assume new. What do you think, Lee? I I think that are, I want to say it's going to be a continuation, but I feel like they'll do like the Spider-Man like homecoming rule, like you know his origin origin, so we can move forward, but things will be tweaked. So it won't be like mm. a straight up sequel, but they're not going to go back. You know, oh, you got blind because of this, and you know, you you know you've got this big relationship. With the kingpin, I think it will, it, will, it will go straight into it. Like you already know everything, full you know, full gas. You don't need any backstory, and mm-hmm. they can dive in. And it and to me, when I saw the fact that Daredevil is getting eighteen episodes, in my mind, I'm like, oh my god! Like that's eighteen weeks. That's eighteen weeks of that we're going to get uh, Marvel content, and we're probably going to get other shows in between that. Yeah, that's insane to me. That's insane. And I, I hope they don't do it where like it's like seventeen episodes of boring exposition and like the last twenty minutes of episode eighteen is like fight scene. I really hope they don't do that. <laughs> I well, I hope not. I'd be so pissed. Uh, but the thing is, like Charlie Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil, he's he's got his work cut out for him right now because he No Way Home, Echo, 
uh, She Hulk, the Disney, yes, po- yeah. you know, Daredevil. Like the man's got work for the next three to four years. He's he's gonna get a nice paycheck, so I'm really jealous about that. <laughs> I hope they bring oh, back yeah. everyone else too, like Foggy, um, mm-hmm. like Electro. I hope bring they bring back the back. same cast. Yeah. They already brought back uh, Kingpin, um, Vincent D'Onofrio. So yeah, mm-hmm. they they're gonna have to yeah, bring so... back Foggy in it. Uh, is it Froggy or Foggy? Foggy. Okay, Foggy. Okay. Foggy. <laughs> yeah. So um... yeah, they gotta bring it back. They gotta bring back his girl. They gotta bring back uh, the old guy. Um, or is he not? Is he not alive in that universe? <laughs> I don't. I don't even oh, watch stick. this one. Yeah. yeah. They gotta bring back him. Bring them all back. Just just do it. Yeah. Just do a soft reboot. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, right, yeah, right. a soft, soft reboot. Uh, but guys, like, real quick, I would yeah, love to get your thoughts on probably besides the Avengers getting announced, the biggest thing. Actually, uh, Andrew, you probably already mentioned this, but what do you guys all think about Black Panther trailer? Oh, it was a oh great trailer, man! Great that was trailer. They're, they're gonna be they're beating Avatar to their uh, the Blue Man thing they, they got they had like blue water people in, that, yeah. in the trailer like, was, like james cameron's yeah. gonna be like fuming right now he's gonna be he's gonna be pissed but it was emotional it was a great trailer the music was fantastic the, the way it went into the whole you know kendrick lamar song at the end and all that but it's tough without um you know uh black Panther. i forgot the, the actor's name chadwick yeah, chadwick, chadwick, chadwick Boseman. Boseman. yeah tough without him but ryan cooler i think young but talented director i think he can put together a good movie yeah, yeah I, I, I absolutely adore this trailer i feel like um i brought it, i think i brought this up before on our, one of our podcast episodes but i am um a hispanic mexican uh um, ethnicity and so seeing namar um be being um of aztec culture of being indigenous uh from mexico that was a huge moment for me seeing that in the trailer um the representation is so strong and I love it. And I, I'm seeing it on TikTok, I'm seeing it on Twitter how there's a bunch of movements of like people wanting to show up in, in you know in unison, you know, being unified to support this film because it you know it's, it's representing two very distinct, unique cultures. Oh yeah. Um, so with all that put you know all that in one, I absolutely love that trailer. I think I caught myself watching it over and over again for like four or five times. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> Are are you happy the fact that uh, well uh, I think you are but you you feel comfortable with the fact that they changed his origin? Yeah, that, that's a good point. I think someone else asked me that um, the other day. Um, I'm I'm not against it. I mean, aside from being you know, a representation, like in general, I'm not against it. I think it's unique because I know they definitely want to like Marvel wants to distance themselves from you know Aquaman being king of Atlantis. Yeah. they want to get their own thing. You know, like that's that, that's Marvel. They've always wanted to be their own thing. So I think in general, it kind of works. What do you think? I th- I think it was a very smart move by Marvel um, and to to do it. I feel, especially with the Aztec, I feel like that's again, you know, that's something that we haven't really seen. So that representation would be very good for this type of movie, as opposed to the Atlanteans. You know, they're, they're all from they're all from Atlantis. You know. Um, yeah. so I feel like they've done that very well. And, you know, I can imagine straight off the board when they were first drawing this up, they were going to take away from Atlantis, take away from anything Atlanteans that we've all been scrapped on day one. But the trailer is just so, that's everything I wanted in a trailer for Black Panther it is so powerful. I, and, you know, we didn't, at the same time, it was so powerful, yet it didn't actually really show us a whole lot about the plot of the movie, you know, we got a lot of like cinematic pieces. We saw Wakanda throne room underwater. Yeah. You know, we saw Namor, you know, not really doing any massive fighting, more of being a leadership. And you obviously saw Black Panther at the end, which we assume that's going to be Cherie or oh, I forgot her name, the Those, love interest. Uh, Lupita Nyongo. Yeah, her character. Yeah. Yeah, her character. And I and the mum as well saying, you know, I'm the most pow- you know, I'm the leader of the most powerful Ooh. nation in the world, and I've lost everything. What more could I give? I was like, oh my god, this is just gonna be balls to the wall. It's, a- <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be Shuri, Shuri. I don't know how to say it. It, it, it has, has to be, be Shuri. Her. 
I, I can't think. Yeah. I, I would love it to be Lupita Nyong'o because I think she's a great actress, but it, it's got to be Shuri. Um, hashtag Lego leaks. Um, you know <laughs> yeah, 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 Lego leaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you oh, see Riri Williams. Oh my god, that's right, Ironheart. We got our first look at Ironheart. What is Ironheart? <laughs> Essentially, she's just as smart as the short version. She's just as smart as Tony Stark. Mm. Uh, she goes to the same. She went to MIRT or MIT or the same school that Tony was doing the speech of at Civil War, and um, that he's pumping all the money into um, to you know for the grants and everything. And she becomes very inspired by Iron Man, and she becomes uh, Iron Heart, and she builds her own Iron Man suit. Uh, in the comics, she actually builds it a full working suit, a lot better than what Tony could do on his first crack. Oh. Um, so that's so that's the interesting. That's why when you trailer, that's why when she hits the hammer, it breaks into a heart. I was like, ah, oh, that's very on the nose. But yeah, we get. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Now I don't, I don't even need to watch the show anymore. I know what exactly. What was she gonna do? She's yeah. gonna build Iron Man suit. So I'll just watch the last episode. <laughs> yeah, which also got leaked in Lego. I I, I saw it. the Lego leak too. I oh, know it wasn't Lego. Yeah. It was pop um pop vinyls. Ah. Uh, oh, we okay. Love our pops. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, okay. they, they they leaked it. Well, I love it. Thank you, Lee. This is an amazing conversation we we had with you this entire time. We love it. Thank you to everybody who's definitely stuck out this entire time. Again, this is Lee from Lights Camera Rant amazing incredible podcast the man has been at it for the longest time now he's putting in the work his podcasts are incredible the check out his merch he gives you definitely merch. check out his merch <laughs> <laughs> but uh again like lee give us a quick uh a quick uh preview of what you got coming up in the future what, what do you got going on uh well actually in the next uh four weeks uh what we've got planned is for uh we got three guests pl- uh, lined up for the next three weeks Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait to announce who they are, and one of them being uh, the Nerd Dosed. Uh, they're coming on for another episode with Mark from Mark My Words um, and his gaming channel. And after that, for the next four weeks, for the biggest one is that we will be doing a live Twitch stream uh, for Lights Camera Rant, which will be a live podcast episode that anyone can come and jump in and talk and chat and at the same time so that's probably the biggest thing over the next four weeks so full full steam ahead uh for lights camera rant and adding more to the merch store but yeah so guest 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 live twitch stream episode which i can't wait to do which look guys if you do have time i'd love for you to jump in and ask questions and just chat um and props to you, you guys you guys have been a great host and for anyone listening, you need to subscribe, like everything to their channel because the next 12 months, these are guys are going to be the premier podcast. I take my bets right now. Only Lee can turn something about himself into someone else. Like this man is humble. I'll tell you that. Like I really now, appreciate Now we got to add guy. that to our intro, Andrew. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> 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 well, you all heard it, guys. Lee has a Twitch stream coming up. He's got a guest podcast coming up. Be sure to tune in. We definitely will be. We're excited to be friends with this guy. He's one of our closest podcast people that we've met here. We have nothing but the highest respect for him, and we love to see how successful he's becoming. His posts are looking incredible. His his following is growing. Everything about this guy is just going up from here. So, Santi, would you have any other words for him? Oh, no, it was, just, it was a great episode. Um, I, I just loved it bouncing from topic to topic. It was something a little bit different for us because usually we're just analyzing a movie. So totally really enjoyed the debate, uh, friendly debate, and just talking about <laughs> yes. all the upcoming news. I definitely want to do this again. It was a lot of fun. Yes, I would love to do this again, and we need to line up in 100% because this was really fun to talk to you guys. We definitely loved it. Thank you very much, Lee. And thank you, everyone else, for tuning in to another episode of our Tickets for Two podcast. Uh, We hope to see you next week where Santi and I will be reviewing which movie, Santi? Give him a little little taste of what we got going on. Ooh, what? I don't know. Did we decide? We decided. We're doing doing Bullet Train, folks. That's right. It's going to be I'm curious for that one. So I'll be tuning in for that one without a shadow of a doubt. 
because it looks very interesting, a very interesting concept. Thank you very much, Lee. And then thank you very much for everyone else listening. And we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you then. See you then, guys. Happy ranting. Thanks for listening to Lights, Camera, Rant. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, leave us a rating and review, and be sure to tell your friends. Until next time, happy ranting.